This is the second part of the Unify Gateway based QoS videos. In previous one, I already discussed how it works in action and we went to the details about one type of the QoS rule, prioritize. In this video, we will discuss another type, limit. In previous video, we discussed in very details about Linux traffic control, about queuing discipline, classes, filters, and IP tables. So in this video, I will directly jump to the limit QoS rule discussion. In Unify Network Controller under Routing QoS, I already enabled this limit VLAN 88 QoS rule. As you can see, its objective is limit. The source network is VLAN 88. I limited the download bandwidth limit to 188 megabit per second and upload bandwidth limit to 288. In the lower part of the screen, in the SSH session, let me run the three TC commands to show you the queuing discipline, classes, and the filters for the current setup. I run the commands against interface Ethernet 9. It's the part 10 for my primary one part. This is the queuing discipline. This is for classes. This is for filter. Based on these outputs, I draw the diagram. If you watched my previous video, you may realize it's so close to what we had in previous video, which is about the prioritize QoS rule. In fact, Ubiquiti utilized the exact queuing disciplines to support limit QoS rule as well. So I will quickly go through the hierarchy because we already discussed them in very detailed way in previous video. So the root is a HTB queuing discipline. It says the default is number two, which is the left side branch. You can see the left side branch has the priority seven, lowest priority, which means in our case, if the traffic doesn't belong to VLAN 88, it will have priority seven. However, for the right side HTB class, you can see it has priority one. And just from the rate and the sailing, you can already tell this class is for VLAN 88, corresponds to what we set up in the QoS rule. Remember in our QoS, we say for upload, we set the limit to 288, right? That's why here for rate and the sailing, you see the exact same number. And interestingly, see what's the priority? The priority is one, it's not zero. We will discuss that later, but a little bit counterintuitive. The VLAN 88 traffic has higher priority than regular traffic because you can see VLAN 88 has priority one or others, they have priority seven. The real purpose you introduce this limit QoS rule is to limit its bandwidth. But why the system gives it higher priority? If you think about that furtherly, it will make sense. On the surface, yes, you want to limit the speed. But on the other hand, you set the speed, which means you want to guarantee they have the speed no matter what. Think about another extreme scenario. If you have a very heavy network traffic situation, now you start a hyper 3 testing from VLAN 88, the system will guarantee you have this bandwidth no matter what. How the system can achieve that? Only by giving your packets higher priority. That's why here for VLAN 88, it has priority one, okay? So that's the reason behind it. And then here, if you compare the left branch and the right branch, you can see another major difference is in C burst. So we will discuss this C burst later when we talk about bursting. So for now, let's skip it for the FQ codo layer. If you compare their differences, the left side, the limit, which means for one Q, it has this maximum number of packets. But if you compare the right side, you can see the limit 
has a smaller number, which means just to guarantee the quality of this VLAN 88 traffic, the system give each queue less packets so that the quality can be better guaranteed. Other parameters, they are the same, so we want to skip them because we already talked about them in previous video. Yep, that's it. And when it comes to the filter and the ingress, egress, they have the exact same situation as previous video. And this special queuing discipline, ingress, will lead to a virtual interface, IFB Ethernet 9. Let me show you. The ingress traffic for Ethernet 9 is stolen by this virtual IFB interface. So the system will use this virtual interface to apply the traffic control over ingress traffic. So let me clear screen, then show you the IFB Ethernet 9's queuing disciplines, classes, and the filters. And based on these outputs, I draw the corresponding inbound diagram. And similarly for inbound, the system use a IFB interface to deal with the ingress traffic control. They have the almost identical values except for this one. See what's this? It's 188. What's 188? If you check our QoS rule, it's for download. Why here is download? Because we are talking about inbound, ingress. The rate is different. Here is 188. If you compare the previous one for outbound, it's 288, right? So this is the only difference. Because of our hard work in previous video, for this video, for this limit QoS rule, it's pretty straightforward. It works in almost the same way as previous case. Now let's talk about a interesting combination. What if you have a QoS rule, which is not only prioritize, but also limit? What will happen? Let's look into it. In Unify Network Controller, I already created a new QoS rule. As you can see, the objective is prioritize and limit. So the source network is VLAN 66 and I set the upload bandwidth only and I set it to 100 megabit per second. Okay, so it's already active. Then in SSH, I already run the three TC commands and based on the outputs, I draw a new diagram, which is for this brand new QoS rule. As you can see, the hierarchy is the same, but there are two differences in the parameter values. First, for this HDB, which is for the VLAN 66, you can see the priority now is zero. Remember in previous scenario, when the QoS rule is only limit, the priority is one, right? This time, when we set the rule to prioritize and limit, the real difference when it comes to priority is the priority changed from one to zero. Just a little bit bump. But that's enough to make VLAN 66 traffic the highest priority. That's one major change. And then the other change, see this one? Quantum is 300. Remember previously, when we set the VLAN 88 a speed limit, we see the quantum is 1514, which is like the MTU, right? But why this time? We just reduced the speed limit. The quantum became smaller. Now let's talk about what's quantum. It is the number of bytes a network flow is allowed to send in one round of the scheduler. It is the fundamental part of the FQ Codos algorithm. It is called DRR, which stands for Deficit Round Robin. In fair queuing, each active flow is assigned a deficit counter. On each round, the scheduler add the quantum value to that flow's deficit. The system will only let the flow send packets as long as their size is smaller than the deficit. If the flow cannot send a full packet, it has to wait till next round and it has to accumulate the deficit until the deficit is bigger enough to send out its packets. So in this way, the system used this quantum number to control whether a flow is allowed to send out its packet. Apparently, if the number is smaller, the network flow is more limited, right? And the reason here, the system 
chooses a smaller number is because now we have a more limited network speed. You know what? The reason I choose 100 because it's a magic number. Here, let me simply increase it, change it to 101, right? Apply changes. If I show the queuing discipline information again, this time, every other parameter has the same old value, only this quantum value is changed. Now it's back to the value we are familiar with, right? Just because I increased the speed limit a little bit. My understanding is behind the screen, based on the speed limit you set, Ubiquiti decides what's the quantum number to configure for the FQ codal queuing discipline. Okay, that's a interesting observation. Let's move on. The last part for this video Video about bursting. If the objective for your QoS is limit or prioritize and limit, when you set the limit under it, you can see another setting. For this upload limit, I have the upload bandwidth burst setting. By default, it's off. I can set it to short or long. So let's see how this setting works in action before changing it from the lower part of the screen from this VLAN 66 client. Let me do a iperf 3 testing against a server on the one part because I am not specifying the direction. So by default, it's uploading or sending, which means it's upload, right? So this speed limit should apply. Let me run it. Okay, you can see the speed limit is about 100 megabits, right? As expected. Now, let me change it to short. Keep in mind, at this moment, the one part of the UDM Pro is very light. There's no traffic at all, which means even though I limit the VLAN 66 bandwidth, it's not really necessary because even the speed exceeds the limit, there won't be impact to anybody because there's no traffic at all, right? So that's the reason behind the bursting, which is without impacting others, you can temporarily increase the speed. I already set it to short, right? Let me repeat the iperf 3 testing in VLAN 66 client. Yeah, you can see the speed is different from time to time. It's more than 100 megabit. And most of the time, they are still below 100 megabit. But the average is about 200 megabit here. Okay, you see the effect for short bursting. Now let me change it to long. Let's see what will happen. Now let me repeat the exact same testing. See, now the speed is pretty consistent. It's close to one gigabit. That's the effect of long bursting. Okay, now we see how they works. What's the effect? Let's go to the backend to see why the different behaviors. So in the SSH session, let me clear screen. Let me only show you the green ones for classes because the burst related parameter is under this class. Okay, let me run the TC class command. So see this one column four HTTP class, the C burst is this number. So it's slightly different than what I have on the slice because my slice is based on the speed limit of 100. And because now we have the speed limit 101, so that's why the number is a little bit different, but it doesn't matter because they are on the same level. So you can see this value is for long bursting. And if I change the bursting to short, then run the exact same command, you can see these two numbers are very similar. It's just there's one less zero for this short bursting. So which means it's only 10% of the long bursting C burst value. Okay, so now you see the value difference, right? The difference of the C burst setting caused speed testing's different behavior. But what's C burst at all? So C burst is a parameter used by HTB, the hierarchical token bucket and it controls how traffic can temporarily exceed the configured rate limit. So C burst basically it means the peak rate, how high the rate can go. So the C burst allows a class to send traffic faster than the rate but only for a very short time. 
and after this number is used up the class is limited to the original limitation and for cburst it applies when a class is allowed to borrow unused bandwidth this is important because as I mentioned when I did the testing at that time the network traffic for the UDM Pro was very light so that's why even though I did set the VLAN 66 limit but it could borrow the bandwidth the system could afford that right and if you check ubiquitous tooltip for this setting you can see ubiquitous explanation short bursts improve users experience while long bursts improve client speed testing results okay so it's just from the user experience perspective what's the effect now we know under the hood from technical perspective why the system will have the different effect because the system is allowed to borrow the unused bandwidth up to this number okay this ends the video thanks for watching